Ok, so today I will show you how to make custom front panels for your electronic project. And that's because I was recently playing with the next gen and even displays and I want to control them using the Arduino, using potentiometers, something like this, but maybe, maybe slightly better looking and I thought maybe what if I create custom front panel for this one. And I was experimenting with using custom PCB for the front panel design in the past, but today I want to see if there is a way how to create those custom front panels at home, and for that I will be using aluminium sheets with the laser engraver. The laser that I'm using today is from a company named Longer 3D, and the laser is called Longer Nano Pro, and it's a galvanometer laser, meaning that the laser beam is moving using mirrors, so it should be very fast. And because Longer 3D is a sponsor of today's video, you can use this discount code to save $100 from your order, so thank you Longer 3D, and let's get back to the laser engraver. It's using 12 watts diode laser, which means that we cannot engrave directly on the metal, but if you have a metal that has some kind of coating, like for example a paint like this one, this has a paint on it, or anodization layer like this one, you can use the laser to remove the coating and expose the metal underneath, and that's exactly what I will be doing today. Now the first thing that I need is some kind of design, so let me actually create that. And for my first design, I will use the free online tool called Vector Ink. So click the use the online application, and I don't think that my size will be in those presets, so just select any size, and then go to document settings, change the units to be millimeters, and I've measured my aluminium sheets to be 86 by 54 millimeters, and then I will zoom in as much as I can to see the whole document. Let's start by visualizing the hole for the potentiometer, so let's click the rectangle tool and click it one more time and select the ellipse tool and then draw the ellipse in any size and select the ellipse and in the right panel I will lock the aspect ratio and set the size to be 7 by 7 millimeters and then center it on the canvas using those two buttons. I've also measured the size of the knob which seems to be about 30 millimeters, so anything I draw should be outside of this area, so I'll create one more circle and draw it in any size, and again select the circle and set the size to be for example 33 by 33 millimeters, and also center it on the canvas. Now for my first design I want two circles with the tick marks in between them, which means that I will create one more circle and draw it bigger than the first one, and then select it and make it aligned to the center of the document, and if I click this button, actually I believe those two buttons, if I now change the size it will be scaling from the center, and I think that this size is about right, so maybe just tweak it slightly to be 39mm, and now I want to draw tick marks in between those two circles, so select the circle tool again and click it one more time and select the line tool, and then draw the line from the center of the first circle to the center of the second circle like so. Then select the selection tool and I want to have a multiple of those tick marks and for that I will use this tool which is for creating arrays and I will just move this center to be the center of the document like so. And right now we have 5 tick marks but if I open this panel I can increase the number of copies and I guess I will go with having 11 copies for no particular reason, I just like how this looks like. Now to spice up our design a little bit, I will add the minimum and the maximum markers. I will select the pen tool and draw the line from this position, so from this point, at around the same angle as the tick mark, so maybe something like this, and then continue on the left side, and this time make this horizontal, like so, and I don't want to continue with drawing, so select the selection tool, and maybe if the angle doesn't seem right, I can select the point tool and just select this point and move it slightly to the left side to match the angle, and I think this looks better. And I also wanted this corner to be slightly rounded, and there is a tool for that which is this one for rounded corners, so just click the corner and then drag the mouse up or down to select the radius for the corner, and I think just about this one looks correct to me. So I will select the shape and duplicate it using this duplicate tool, and then flip it using this tool, and move it on the right side to visualize the maximum value. Now it might be a good idea to also add some text, and for that I will select the text tool and select some font, for example the Roboto Mono and type in min for minimum value, click the save button and that will add the text, and if I select the selection tool I can just resize it to be the smaller size and move it to the correct position like so, and then duplicate this one more time and move it on the right side, and then double click the text and type in a new message being the max and click the save button, and we now have the minimum and maximum labels, so the only thing that I will do is to delete this line by selecting it and then clicking this button, or I believe I can also click the backspace button, 
to just get rid of the tick mark and I think that this is something that we can use as a front panel so click this button to export it as a PNG file format without the transparent background and click the save button. Now to keep all the details we want to have this image as big as possible so maybe I will re-export it again and maybe increase the size to be slightly bigger and then click the save button again and now I think the image is big enough to be used for our engraving. Which means it's time to put together the laser engraver. And that's actually quite simple, you just take the main laser unit which is this one and attach it to the stand using one big knob. So let me just screw this together. And after that you snap on the protective cover that is being attached using magnets and then you need to connect the cable from the cover to the main laser unit using the USB-C cable because the cover has the fan inside. And you can see there are a lot of different connectors because all the accessories are using USB-C cables but thankfully they have different colors so you can easily differentiate between them. By the way there are two accessories that you can get with the laser, one is for making the work area bigger and the other one is for engraving on the curved surfaces. The connector with the red color should be connected to your PC so I will do that, I will connect the USB-C cable to my PC. And once everything is connected I will also connect the provided 12 volt power supply and then I can turn on the laser by pressing this button on the top. Now for the engraving or cutting it is important to have the laser at a specified distance and you can either use the ruler that you will get with the laser or you can click this button on the main laser unit and it will light up two laser beams. The goal is to move the laser head using the up and down buttons on the stand until you will see only one dot, until both of those dots will be on the same position. The thing is, if your material has very little thickness, like is the case with my aluminium panels, in that case the distance between the laser head and the material should be exactly the same as the height of the protective cover. So in that case you just put on the cover and then you press the down button until it's not possible to move it down anymore and that should be the distance. By the way for the rest of the video I will not be using the cover because I want to record all those time lapses but you should definitely not do that. So the laser unit is prepared for the engraving, we just need to use some software to send the data to the laser and you can choose between multiple different applications, I will start with the free one which is called laser grbl. To set it up properly for the laser you need to right click those buttons and select import custom buttons. And the laser had the USB stick included which has this ZBN file which I need to open and it will ask me if I want to remove the actual buttons, I will say yes and then I will import all those individual buttons, so click the yes button for all those buttons and now we have access to those buttons which are for this laser. Then I will open our exported image by going to file, open file and that's this file, so click the open button. And what I want to do in here is to make sure that the quality is set to 16.67 lines per millimeter and the direction is set to horizontal and I think that all the other settings could be left to default so click the next button and here we want to set the engraving speed and I did found out that 6000 millimeters per minute works fine. We need to make sure that the laser mode is set to the constant power and then for the power itself it should be multiplied by 10 so if we want to go all the way to 100% we should change the number to be 1000. Then I will set the size and my aluminum sheets are 86 by 54 millimeters and if I click this button it will center it on the canvas. So hit the create button and we have a new project created. So now it's time to connect to the laser by selecting the correct port which will most likely be the last one, then setting the baud rate to be the last one which is 921600 and click the connect button. And if the connection was successful you will see the information about the laser unit. Now to see the area where the image will be engraved I can click this nano frame button and the laser will visually show the area where the image will be engraved. Now if you want it on the different position you can jump back into the application and in here click those arrow buttons to move the image around and you can change the step size by changing this slider. And once everything is in the correct position there is one important button to press and that's this one, switch to the engrave mode so press the button and then we can start engraving by pressing this run program button and it will ask you to wear the safety goggles and then it will start the engraving process and you can see the progress right in this window and what is currently being engraving and what was already engraved. And it looks like it's already done. And it just needs a little bit of cleaning but otherwise I think it looks great. 
By the way, for cleaning, I'm just using the standard rubbing alcohol. So let me quickly show you how I have done the other designs. For them I've used a different tool being the Adobe Illustrator just because I know how to use it, but you can of course use any other tool, for example Inkscape, which is similar to Adobe Illustrator, but it's free. So here inside Adobe Illustrator I will create a new file in the same size as my aluminum sheet being the 86 by 54 millimeters, And I will again simulate the hole for the potentiometer being 7 by 7 millimeters, and of course center it on the canvas and maybe change the stroke width to be slightly smaller. And then I will create one more circle to simulate the knob which is again about 30 by 30 millimeters. No fill and center align it on the canvas and maybe fade it out a little bit because this is not what we want to engrave. And then I will draw one more circle, again from the center of the canvas, about maybe this size, so maybe about 35 or maybe 39 millimeters. And I want to draw some dots going from the small one all the way to the big one on the right side, like so. So for that I will create one more circle, being the small circle, and just set the fill to be black color and no outline. And then do the same thing, but this time it will be much bigger, for example, like this. And I want to create a smooth transition between this circle and that circle. And for that I will use the blend tool and click this circle and that circle. And if I double click the blend tool I can change the spacing to be specified steps and set the number of in between states. But I think that 16 should be fine in my case. So click the OK button. Now we just need to put those circles around this big circle and the way how to do that is not very intuitive. You keep the blend object selected and then you also select the circle. And then you go to object menu and select the blend replace spine option. And that should do the trick. So we just need to rotate the spine by selecting the ellipse and then going to object transform. And I want to rotate it in a way that the smallest circle is on the left side and the biggest circle is on the right side. Something like this. And now I can hide the preview of the knob shape and we have another design finished. So I will go to file export for web. And by default the image is very small, so I will scale it up to maybe 1000%. And I think that this size is much better, so I will save it in the PNG file format without the transparency. And we have another image ready to be engraved, but this time I will use a different tool, being the light burn. In here I will first edit the laser by clicking the devices button and then clicking the import button. And I will again use the file that was on the USB stick that came with the laser, so this lbdev file and click the OK button, and then select the dead laser. And you can see that the work area has changed to be 100 by 100 millimeters. And what I want to do is to import our image by going to File, Import, and selecting that image. And of course the size should be 86 by 54 millimeters. And then I will go to Edit Settings and make sure that the units are set to millimeters per minute, because those were the units that I was using in the previous tool. And then I will double click the layer and make sure that the speed is set to 6000 mm per minute. The power is all the way to 100% and the constant power mode is enabled. I will enable the bidirectional scanning so it will engrave the image in both directions. And the important setting is to set the line interval to be 0.06 mm or 423 dpi the dots per inch. Now as for the image mode I'm going with threshold because I only have black and white areas on my image. But if I would have some grayscale colors I will probably change it to a different one. But again I will go with threshold and click the OK button. I will turn on the laser and select the correct port which will most likely be the highest one. And if I jump into the console window you can see that it was successfully connected and the laser was recognized. Now again I want to see the outline of the shape and for that I will click the frame button. But there is actually nothing happening on the laser. And that's because by default in the light burn if I hover over this button it's saying that it will move the laser head but the beam is disabled. And in the case of our laser since this is the galvanometer laser we cannot see any head movement so we want to show the laser beam at least a little bit. And for that I will go to edit device settings and make sure that this checkbox saying laser on when framing is enabled and then click the OK button. And then I will jump into the move tab and here you can see how much power you want to apply to the laser when framing. And I think that 2 or 3% is just enough. By the way, you cannot go over 20%, but again, 2% should be fine. And if I click the frame button now, I can see the outline. Let me show it to you on the laser. This is how the outline looks like. Unfortunately, unlike the other application, it shows the outline only once, so you just have to keep pressing the frame button if you want to show it multiple times. 
Now with the laser, you will get those corner pieces that you can screw on to the base plate and that's quite helpful if you want to engrave multiple pieces. So what I will do is I will just put them somewhere on the base plate and you can see that I wasn't always engraving on the correct position. So the base plate already has some marks on it. And then back inside the Lightburn application, I will just move the image slightly and then keep pressing the frame button until I'm on the right position, which is probably this one. And I have those aluminum sheets and I believe 10 different colors. And you can get all those 10 colors very cheaply on AliExpress. Although I cannot use this silver one because that one has no coating. But my favorite color is this matte black. Also this color will of course give you the highest contrast. So let me just put it on the base plate. Now before engraving we need to do the same step as in the previous application and that is go to console and click this switch carving mode. And then if you want to see the preview of how this image will be engraved, you can right click and select preview. And you can click the play button to see the head moving. And you can also see the time which will be around 2 minutes and 11 seconds. So the only thing left to do is to click the start button. And it looks like that it will actually take less than 2 minutes. And so once this is engraved, I need to again clean it up a little bit. But I think that the result looks great, especially for something that you can do by yourself at your desk. So let me also quickly show you the other designs and for some of them I have the knobs in the same color, like the gold one or even the pink one. But of course the black knob or the silver knob will work with any color. By the way, this is how those designs look in Adobe Illustrator. Let me also show you this, which is the plate without any coating and you can see the laser will do something, but it's almost invisible. I also want to show you this red plate. You can see I have the circle with the crosshair in the middle. And if I flip it, this is using the very same picture, but it looks completely different. And this is what actually happens if you start engraving without clicking the switch carving mode button first. And this is it for today. In the next video, I would like to use those panels with the real potentiometers connected to Arduino to control those Devin and the Nexion screens, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.